G'day, fellas. And welcome to a very special casted game. Spawning in on the west side of the map, playing in the color blue as the Abbasid Dynasty, we've got State. And on the east side of the map, in the color green, playing as the Chinese, we've got TK. Now, you might be wondering, Drongo, why the hell is this so damn special? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my first time ever casting live from the booth in camera. That is correct. I'm coming live from my hometown. I'm up here for Christmas at the moment, and I figured, well, I might drop into my brother's house. He's got the same microphone I do. I do. He's got the same... Uh, he's got the same mouse I do, so pretty much everything is the same. That's They're the main components of a computer. Uh, so I figured, why not? We'll just do it. We'll watch some Age of Vampires 4 while we do it. So starting off, we've got a pretty interesting matchup. Obviously, this is Dry Arabia. Dry Arabia known for its aggression. But we've got two sieves that like to boom a little bit. Maybe even a little bit too much at times. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Now, for anybody who's missed it, State recently has been climbing up the ladder. This guy, whoop, there he is. This guy, he's been climbing up the ladder at the moment, uh, sitting at rank number nine. He has been taking out people left, right, and center. Incredible stuff. Uh, he actually played in the Outback Octagon, if you guys remember the free-for-all tournament not too long ago. It was, uh, what, a couple of months ago? Something tells me that there might be a second coming of it, but we'll have to wait and see exactly how that goes. But, uh, yeah, he played in that, and he did pretty well. But he's been kind of out of the competitive scene for a while. But it's good to see him back. He's playing. He's got a lot of time now. I suspect that's probably why he's playing. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's looking to grind the ladder. So we'll see how, what he pulls out today. Because going up against China, China is one of those civilizations where it's just, you know, it's been very strong for quite some time now. It's been nerfed recently. And people still don't really know how to feel about it. To be honest, I don't really know how to feel about it. And we've got an interesting build coming out from TK. This is actually the Demuslim opening. So six vils on food, three vils on wood, then three vils out to gold. This is something Demuslim has been doing with China for like, well, the game's been out for, for 12 months. And Demuslim has been playing probably for close to 12 months as well. So I, re I reckon for the, almost the entire time he's been doing this China build. And he, he's never updated his build order. So it, it's been doing him right. Let's just say that much. It's been, it's been doing him well. So he must be doing something right. Uh, but we've got TK, who's over on the east side of the map. Now, I don't know a lot about TK, but I can tell you that this guy is mainly a team player. He plays in, in team games quite a bit. He's a Conk 3 team player when it comes to 1v1. He is Conqueror. Uh, so he's pretty good. He, he's competent. He knows what he's doing. And most importantly, he's playing China. China, obviously... Uh, an S tier civilization at the moment. Uh, I, I think I've talked about this before, but if I had to put a tier rating on China at the moment, I'd still call them S tier. I'd probably put English in the same tier. And then the A tier, it's probably every other civ. <laughs> Not every other civ, but you, you guys get the point, right? Like, the, so many civilizations are viable at the moment with the current balance. So I think that uh, as a result, I mean, I don't think Abbasid are probably that high, but to be honest, State's, State's been doing pretty well with them. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how he plays it. Now, he's got the economic wing coming up. No real surprises there. I don't think we're going to be seeing trade out of state today, but, uh, I mean, you never know. Never know. Uh, one of the things to note that with the Abbasid Dynasty, they actually do get cheaper traders. And we don't see people exploit that a lot. You would think that that would be pretty important, right? Like, they, they have a reduction in cost of 33%. So everyone else is paying 60 wood, 60 gold. They're paying 40 wood, 40 gold. So a lot cheaper. So I think it's pretty viable to go for, but still there's a lot of other strengths available to the Abbasid Dynasty that they often look to go for. And people kind of just pigeonhole their, themselves into the economic wing. Obviously that reduced villager cost is just so nice to have. But we we do hear some screams coming out as in classic Abbasid style, a wolf getting, uh, getting attacked by the scout there. I love the way that they scream. Uh, but it looks like what we've got State doing is going for the Golden Age here. So looking to try and get down 10 buildings ASAP. You can see he's building excess houses at the moment. He's sitting at 18 of 30. He's going to be going up to 18 of 40 with this house. And then, of course, dropping down a mill. Probably going to be dropping down another house in between. And there's a second lumber camp. So he's looking to get up this Golden Age as quickly as he can. Now, he's also got 125 gold in the bank. Not enough to get the wheelbarrow, but it is going to be enough to get fresh, fresh foodstuffs in immediately. Expect to see that research coming in any second. There it is. Fresh foodstuffs going to be coming in. 30 seconds to go. And he is about to hit that 10 building mark right now. Stable getting dropped. And at the same time, the lumber camp coming up. So that's going to be 9. That's 10. He's going to do it before 4 minutes 30. So not a bad little timing there. Keep in mind, that's an extra 15% resource gather rate on all resources. That's crazy. From 4 minutes 30 into the game, the Abyssinian Dynasty has plus 15%. That's, that's kind of wild, isn't it? We'll check in with TK. We'll see what he's up to. It looks like everything just going pretty standard for him. It's going to be going for that Song Dynasty. Now, I will also note, just obviously, uh, for anybody wondering... Um, uh, th this isn't my regular setup. I don't always stream in uh, in Canberra. And as a result, you may hear or see things that are different. As an example, 4K won't be available for you in this video. I'm actually streaming in 1440p, or well, technically recording in 1440p. 
Uh, so that'll be one of the differences. The other things uh, are that... Uh, so this microphone, while it's the same one I've got, my setup is a little bit different. So I've had to change the way that the settings work. So they're not exactly the same. So I might sound a little bit different. I might not be as sexy as I am at home. Or maybe I'll be even more sexy and I'll have to cast here a little bit more. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Uh, and uh, preferably keep it, uh, keep it all family friendly. Thank you. This is a family friendly channel. Song Dynasty coming through. No second town center. In fact, almost a little bit of a weird village here. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, he's got the Barbican right nearby, so it's not a big deal. But uh, it seems a bit strange to not leave a spot right here. Especially because I feel like this could have probably hit the mining camp on the stone outcropping. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Look at this. We got double archery range coming down for TK immediately at the beginning of the game. I do like this, honestly. I, I play this strategy against the Abbasid quite a lot. I think that they're quite weak against early aggression with the uh, the Chukunu. So the fact that we're seeing TK go for it right now, this is pretty impressive. Look at his numbers as well. He is definitely gearing up towards that. Probably needs a few more villages on food. Keep in mind, you're going to need more villages on food with Song Dynasty because you do make those villages a little bit faster. Over on the west side of the map, though, riding on board with State once again, we do see that second town center about to come up at 6 minutes 20. This build order is crazy from State. This is absolutely ludicrous. No wheelbarrow through just yet, but he's going to be picking up survival techniques. I tell you what, this guy knows what he's doing. This is an absolutely crazy Abbasid play that we're seeing out right now. And look at the production that's coming out. Now, keep in mind, the production that, that's coming out from TK is, is coming down right now. He's going for the third archery range here. But at the same time... Hold on a minute. I, I thought this was a stable over here from State. Did he did he change that one out? Maybe I'm crazy. I thought this was a stable. I guess I guess I was just wrong. It was probably just a house all along. Uh, but the stable coming out and going to be opening archery range as well. So probably going to be looking for that mobility combo. The one that we do typically see out of the Abbasid Dynasty is going to be that camel archer from the archery range. And then, of course, the horseman coming out of the stable. It's a really fun combo to run. The problem is, if you do run that, TK playing Chukunu is going to absolutely tear you apart. Uh, so I'm curious to see how State is going to be able to find his timings here because with the second town center, it's going to make it a little bit harder for him uh, because obviously playing up against the one base, the aggression is definitely on his side. So State definitely going to have to have to bide his time. Chikunu coming in. First damage points do come through onto the villager, gathering up the stone. And now the gold village is also going to be pushed off. And I'm loving this early aggression from TK. You watch a lot of other players, myself included, and I'm the kind of guy who waits for, you know, 15, 20 Chikunu to come out. And then I look to attack. But he doesn't. He just goes out and this is the consequence. <laughs> this is why I wait for 20 Chukunu to come out. Because if you, you send them out one by one like this, then they just get picked off by State because he's actually a pretty decent player. So very smart by State uh, to be looking to do this. Uh, but at the same time, this, this is something that you can anticipate. And already we see the consequence of going for this kind of aggression without waiting uh, is that now all of a sudden you've lost your mass. So we've lost one, two, three Chukunu that could all be dealing... 9 damage a pop. I mean, yeah, nine, well, uh, 6 damage a pop, so 18 damage. Now we're talking about some decent numbers, though. This should be more than enough. State should probably be thinking about backing off from this. This is probably a bit a bit too many Chukunu for him to take, but he, he is going to go through. And remember that he is going to be delaying any any attack that comes through by... The, the more Chukunu he takes out, the better it gets for him. Uh, but at the same time, you don't really want to be throwing away your forces the way that he is at the moment. So TK... Initially, I would have said it was a bad trade for him, but I would... I would argue that it's actually been worked out pretty well for him. Uh, but we do see, now that TK has picked up plus one ranged attack, to take a look at State's side. He's already dropped down the blacksmith, and already we see plus one ranged armor coming through. So going to be cancelling it out. Very, very smart. It gives TK a very small window here. Uh, his next focus should probably be something like siege engineering. But at the same time, you are going to be falling behind on the economy. If we have a look at the village account at the moment, 40 villagers versus 33. So a big difference. And keep in mind, out of those 33 villagers, uh, that some of those are Imperial officials. So if we take a look at TK right now, in his base, he's got two Imperial officials, which means that that number is actually only 30 villagers. So you can really see the difference that Song Dynasty has had now that it's been nerfed, because normally you'd expect Song Dynasty to be a little bit higher than, than 35 villagers at the moment, maybe 37, maybe 38, somewhere around that number. But it has definitely hit the Chinese heart. And now we can see an outpost being dropped down as well by State. So State looking to hold down this position a little bit longer. A little bit harder. Arch is also going to be coming out, anticipating that there could be spearmen through from TK. So not going to be going into camels, and this is definitely the right choice. One of the reasons you don't ever want to play camels against China, especially in the in the uh, feudal age, is because the Chukunu just shred through them. You just right-click a camel, and boom, it's dead. But you try and do that to an archer, and you look at the cost difference between the archer 
which is 80 resources, and the Camel Archer, which is 240 resources. So you're paying three times the resources for a unit that still gets one shot. It just doesn't feel good. So very smart move by State to be going into Archers rather than going into Camel Archers. But we do see more and more upgrades beginning to come through. We also see he's looking to pick up the melee attack upgrade. We'll have a look and see whether he's got the ranged attack upgrade. He does indeed. And this is going to be... He's going to eat him alive right now. TK's got to be so careful. He's got the first Spearman coming out, but... I suspect it's still quite a way away. Looking to try and focus down the Horseman. Does a pretty decent job. Gets a decent surround, and he's got his scout grouped up with the Chukunu. And that's going to cost him a lot of time and position. And look at the wonderful surround. TK in trouble here. Not, a, not enough Spearmen. Where are those Spearmen? And just completely eaten alive. I tell you what, I think back to that Reddit post that I, I saw where it's like... Every, I know what every China player is going to do. Because he's American, right? Because every, everyone everyone who complains on Reddit's American. I know what that China player is going to do. He's, he's going to go for a Chukunu rush. And it's like, well, State just went two TCs and he played it insanely greedy and yet still just absolutely destroyed the Chinese offensive. So very well played there by State. And now this is a bit of a, bit of a hard time, right? Like there's a bit of a lull period that enters in here. TK needs to reassess the situation. Does he look to keep putting on pressure? Does he switch up his strategy? Does he think about going into a second town center? Or does he look to go to Castle Age? Because all three of those are viable options. The question is, which one is the correct choice? At the moment, you know that your enemy's gone for a second town center so that you know that they're going to be scaling. Now, when it does get to the late game, you're still in a good position as China. So you could look to drop a second town center here. It wouldn't be bad. But one of the things that you need to be careful of are the Abbasid are very happy to stay in the Feudal Age for a long time. Even if you look to age up, even if you look to try and get your upgrades super, super quickly, because of their extra mobility, they can really take you out in a lot of fights. So you do have to be very, very careful when you play against them. And I, I feel like when you're playing against the Abbasid, you have to play in a way that kind of guarantees that your army isn't going to die before you age up. TK at the moment, he's stacking up gold, which makes me think he kind of wants to age up, but at the same time, it just makes me think his macro is not that good. A lot of people do have trouble managing Chinese uh, macro ever since the Imperial Academy change, where you have more Imperial officials out on the map. It's just been very hard to control. Uh, the, the, the gold income that you've got. And you can see just how much gold income that is. 465 gold a minute. And uh, he's only got a handful of bills on gold. But now looking to chase away some of those units. And we do see behind this state going to be going age three. Very, very smart move from him. Moving up towards this eastern position. Granary going to be idled out for the moment. We'll ride on board over with the state though. Check out where those villagers are. You can see he's got them down in the, the side of the map. And keep in mind, he's got survival techniques. He's also picked up wheelbarrow. Actually, no horticulture just yet. And finds a couple of villagers here that have managed to chop through. We're all going to be coming down. Chukun are going to be looking to defend and hold the line. And at this point, TK is just resigned to, to staying in his base. He can't really leave his base. And that's a problem because in his position, the way that he kills his enemy here is he looks to kill them through battering rams. And if his infantry can never get across the map to make battering rams, which is the case right now because there's just too many horsemen that they're going to start sieging down things and killing villages and camping production... You're in, a bit of a you're in a bit of a pickle. And on top of that, you're also not scaling. Your enemy is. And they're about to have the tech lead. And speaking of tech lead, take a look at that. Look at the upgrades that are coming through right now. We see we've got uh, specialized pick, double broad axe. We've got horticulture coming in. And it looks like he's also going to finish out or round out those uh, blacksmith upgrades as well. But now we've got... Th this is where it kind of it diverts. In an interesting position from TK. He's walling up. But even though he's walling up, what's he walling up? Why is he walling up? What is he protecting here? Because at the end of the day, he's not scaling. His enemy is the one who's scaling. His enemy at this point is up more than 23 villagers. So they're always going to have the economic advantage. So you can wall up. Go for it. Uh, you, be my guest to wall up. Because I'm still going to win the late game anyway because I've got more villagers. Speaking of late game, we now have the age up about to come through for state. The castle age comes through. Culture wing is completed. Expect to see preservation of knowledge already there. 21 seconds to go. We can see the run by. It's attempting to happen right now. And basically what, what, what is happening is TK needs to come back and respond to this. And State knows that. So he's just drawing the army back. He said, I've, I've aged up. I need to get my upgrades through and I need to bide time. I can't die right now. I don't want to fight just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give him the run around. The old GUA run around. Take out some villagers as well. But just remember, this is all a distraction. This isn't real aggression. All he's doing right now is trying to draw this army back. And that's exactly what he's doing. And he's doing it so damn well. A couple of villagers do go down. But remember, these are only horsemen. They're not even really stabbing. They gently tickle the uh, the enemy villagers on the backside. You can see that one right there. Barely even, barely even touched. But take a look back home. 
Look at this for state right now. Look at the production that we've got. Five stables coming out right now for state. And this is a very difficult part for China. Because at this point, China wants to age up. But at the same time, China doesn't want to die. So what does China do? And the answer here... It, it's almost always you need to age up. But the, the problem is you need to try and keep your army hidden. You can't let him fight your, your army until you've got your, your upgrades through. And there's two primary upgrades you're looking through. Number one, it's going to be veterancy for your Chukunu. Number two is going to be balanced projectiles or plus two for your Chukunu. So they've got seven damage. And that's going to really help them out against the horsemen. The problem that you're going to have are meta arms and lances. So you need to add in spears. And you need to do this all while aging up. And we can see the age up's coming through for TK, but he needs to hide his army. TK needs to keep this army hidden. If this army gets caught while the age-up's coming through, the game is over. And you can see the army is overwhelming. I mean, look at the numbers that we've got here. 19 horsemen, 9 knights, plenty more in queue, up 30 villagers. I think even if you don't hide the army, I, or even if you do hide the army, I think the game's just over. Clock tower going to get thrown down. State moving up towards that north side. We can see an outpost. No, it's going to be a mill getting thrown down. He's looking to take his enemy's resources. And look at the camels as well. Nine camel archers now. Huge mobility. And State looking very impressive in this game. He does spot out the enemy army. And he can just dive in for this. Does he see the age up coming through just yet? He sees the enemy dropping down a rax. And that, that's normally a bad sign because that means they want to make, they want to make spears. And if TK is doing the right thing right now, he's supervising this barracks and making spears. And he does spot the age up. He could be looking to, to head right in for it. And that's what he's going to do. We head into the cinematic mode right now as TK tries his best to hold on. But there's just too many units. The age up timing is absolutely terrible. He gets eaten alive. There's not enough spearmen. Veterans, he's not going to come through. He's going to get eaten. You can see him trying to focus the camels down. But the numbers here, completely overwhelmed. State just looking incredible right now. And you can see why he's top 10. Fellas, I'm going to leave a link in the description over towards State's Twitch page he streams sometimes he streams in english he's from america if i remember correctly so go check him out go say good day from me and i will catch you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching